right. It's that time again. This is Daniel Rucker with True Table. How are you guys doing today? Um, this particular episode is coming from a suggestion, a friend of mine, actually. Uh, but before I get into it, go ahead and hit that like button. Uh, go ahead and subscribe. Um, I gladly appreciate it. Gives me the motivation to continue to bring the content, bring the, the, the relative and relevant information to you guys because uh, I'm doing it for y'all. I really am. My goal is to be able to helpfully dispel the nonsense, um, combat the nonsense, and bring actual facts as well as figures, um, hardcore perspective, and hopefully give people a better outcome information that's going to help them to be able to create a different landscape in the things that they're experiencing. So without further ado, uh, we're going to get into it. This topic came from a friend of mine. Uh, and I told him that I would go ahead and do a broadcast about it because his question was, why do they play games, bro? Like, why? So, yeah, that's what it is. Fellas, <laughs> for those of y'all who don't know, for those of you who are experiencing women at uh, a lower frequency, those who are experiencing women maybe for the first time, those who are at whatever point in your life, you need to understand one thing. Women play games now i've touched on this in different levels in the topics that i've had before in different broadcasts that i've done before different you know shows i've done before and i've used references like they test your chest you know she'll ask you a question but it's to see it's like a <laughs> it's like a crap test it's like to see her range to see her uh, ability to get away with something to have leverage of an argument that's pending in the future because regardless of what you think fellas women gather information and they ask certain questions so therefore in the future they can now give you what you said is the standard so that they can either escape <laughs> your standard or combat your standard the whole point is to build up an argument so that she can remain superior in the equation. Now, why do they do this? Well, my belief is that women naturally have convinced themselves they are, they are weaker than men. And biologically, they are. It's been proven, you know, it is what it is. Physically, they are inferior when it comes to men, physique and, you know, things of that nature. Um, but as far as the other elements, no. They're very much as capable as we are when it comes to certain processes cognitively. However, because there's a difference in how we show up in society, right? So men, in my opinion, I believe most men from a place of oneness do not need a community of each other. You know, a man can exist self-sufficiently. You know, he can create his own domicile. He can create his own lifestyle, his own hobbies, things he enjoys doing by him, by himself. This is what it is. Women, on the other hand, are social beings. And why this is important? This is important, fellas, because with their social appetite, with their social existence, career, if you want to call it that, Everything a woman does is always going to be verified and validated by her social circle. It's from relationships to career to outfit, hair color, uh, habit. I mean, this is just how they're made. Why does that come up when it comes to them dealing with us? It comes to that because the one thing I've noticed in all my time getting to know females, because, you know, fun fact for you guys, when I was 10 years old, and you can ask my mother this if you like. Uh, she's more than open and happy to have this conversation. <laughs> but I was 10 years old and I never forget that. But one thing I told my mom I wanted to do is I wanted to seek to learn women. Like at 10, I was like, my mission in life <laughs> is to grow up and learn why they think the way they do. Because I was fascinated by the nonsense <laughs> that I've been seeing since I was younger. I was fascinated by it. I still am fascinated by it. Hence, why I have a YouTube channel. Anyway, so why is this important? This is important because the way that women move in relationships 
based on a perspective that they have of their them being them, us being us, they feel they have to be able to create a place of leverage to deal with a man. It's the very reason why, and I said learning and discovering these things about women, observing them. They're never upfront and honest about most things. They like to create um, dynamics of secrecy. They like to create layers of getting you, getting layers of you getting to experience them in their wholeness. So what do I mean by that? Okay, I'm gonna tell you a little story. To, and it's relative to the topic. I remember there was a young lady who I was friends with uh, some years ago. And, you know, we, most of my homegirls get comfortable enough with me to tell me their dirty little secrets. I don't know. I end up becoming close like that. Whichever, however, doesn't bother me. But what she was sharing with me was that she was dating this guy, right? And the guy started complaining about the fact that she wouldn't give him any oral sex. Like she, she wouldn't perform oral sex on him. They were getting it in. They were having all the other adult like activities happening, but she would not give him oral sex. And it was really becoming an issue for him. So she was like, you know, D, you're a guy, you know, can I ask your opinion? Why does this seem to be an issue for him? And whatever. So I did my best to explain it. So I asked her a direct question. I'm like, well, why don't you, you know, perform the act? Like, why is it a problem? And she said, well, I want to save that for my husband. Like, he's not my husband. So I feel that that's not something I want to share with anybody but my husband. I was like, but you're having sex with him. She's like, yeah, but you don't want to perform oral sex with him. Well, yeah, I want to save that for my husband. Now, this is the difference in the mindset. This is how crazy it is to me because I'm like, so let me get this straight. <laughs> you feel that saving your mouth for your husband in that capacity is gonna somehow, some way give your husband this feeling of virgin-like delivery when you do finally perform the act. Or he's going to be, he's gonna value your discipline and your sacrifice when not sharing your mouth on any other man's genitals this is what you've convinced yourself is your future right and she was like right i said so don't you think that if you were thinking about your future man in that capacity that you just wouldn't have sex period like wouldn't he rather just have a virgin like woman collectively but anyway <laughs> and she was like well uh it, it didn't make no sense to her and mind you she actually had an eight-year-old daughter uh that's a another delusion but anyway so why is that important that's important fellas because just in that little example it explains the difference in perspective of how women think and how men think a lot of times women like to move in a manner that creates a, a power position for them for them you know we are as men powerful in in, in the way where we strive off of strength and success and accolades and all those things and that's all good and fine you know no knock to that but women strive off of the ability to remain secretive to remain in a place of uh how would i put it uh, what's, what's the word a manipulative uh what is the word daniel i'm sorry i'm stumbling over my words at the moment it's like they want to be able to have a certain level of influence in the men and men that they deal with. That's why they play the games. And the games come in because they want, it's almost like women want you to see this, see this when it's actually this. Like there could be madness going on back here, but they don't want you to see it. So they're gonna put up a certain facade. They're gonna create a dynamic. The term like having skeletons in the closet, which whatever people use that term, but you understand the, the, the relevance of the, the metaphor of that is that their whole job is to be able to convince you that they're one way when they may actually be another way. Now, I can hear some women that potentially may be listening to this broadcast and saying, well, women don't play games like a real woman doesn't do that. Ah, I call BS. <laughs> I call BS. This is a natural woman's nature. It doesn't matter if she's immature, or mature, it doesn't matter if she's young, or she's older. It's not even about maturity. It's about the nature of how women move, how they move, and how men move. They're, they're differences. So like I said earlier, fellas, women are social beings. 
and in their social structure, they create dynamics that help them to exist in society. That's how they are. It's the same reason why a woman can have a potty mouth, right? She can talk all kinds of reckless, all kinds of foul. But depending on where she's at and depending on who she's around will determine what type of presentation she's going to give to that person. I'll give you a perfect example. If you took a girl who had a potty mouth, like she just, you know, just, eh, just every other word out of her mouth is, you know, this boom, boom, boom. Like if she talked like that, and you took her to meet your parents, she more than likely would not talk in the same manner. Why? Because she is trying to present to the people that are important to you the best image of herself because she doesn't want to be perceived and judged in a certain way. It's the same thing on why women are not forthcoming and forthright with the body count that they have. The same reason why if they're dating multiple dudes when they meet you, they're not gonna tell you they're dating multiple dudes. Even if you ask, they're nine times out of 10 gonna make it seem very casual. They may attach some BS crap to him like, oh, well, he's just a friend or yeah, but it's not that serious. They don't communicate straight. Their communication is always <laughs> all over the damn place, right? Okay, so why is this important? It's important because if you plan on winning, fellas, you have to understand and learn how to identify the key indicators of her nonsense, right? Uh, one of the motivations behind this uh, broadcast, like I said, was my friend, but it was something that he said that he was observing off of someone else's channel. I think it was the Fresh and Fit channel, and they were doing a panel with just a few girls on there. One of the girls was talking about how she would never, one, get married, and two, allow a man, uh, allow herself not to be independent enough to be with a man. So pretty much, she's not going to ever be in a position where she has to depend on a man. Okay, great. Cool. That's what you feel like doing. You know, me personally, I don't feel there's anything wrong with that. I feel that that's perfect. I don't think any person should put themselves in a position to be dependent as an adult. As an adult, you're supposed to be independent. But I think that the whole not putting your whole self into a situation is the problem. And that drives into my next point. Uh, if she's not willing to participate in the relationship at a level that is her whole ability to her whole self so kind of like which is why i use the example of that the young lady who chose to withhold you know oral pleasure but give sexual pleasure that is an example of not bringing whole self she wanted to reserve and protect or conserve something for her future husband which is crazy because <laughs> like i said it doesn't make sense you were acting in the way at the current time that this man, whoever he was, you were sleeping with him. So he was valuable enough for you to sleep with him, but he wasn't valuable enough for you to perform further acts sexually. But the man that you've never even met, the man that supposedly your husband in the future, and this man is currently here and could be that guy, you're refraining from adding the experience that is you for that man that's currently there for something quote unquote better or potentially better i think it's crazy um and i think that there's a lot of young ladies who do this you know especially when it comes to the modern day structure of how uh, women are aspiring to build up their own life and have their own stuff that's all cool fellas i personally don't have any problem with it because i feel that two incomes are better than one I feel that two independent people are better than one independent person and one codependent person. Again, my opinion. But I do think that you as a man need to know and start to learn to identify when she says certain things. Because I've heard that actually constantly um, from young ladies. You know, whether they observe their mother be in a relationship that she feels that her mother would leave if her mother had the opportunity to leave. Like... You know, uh, in certain communities, there's women who got married to these men and maybe further down the road, he became abusive or he wasn't supportive or he wasn't affectionate, loving, whatever the situation may be, right? And the woman stayed because she had nothing to offer herself. She had no resources. She had no skills. Well, I would say that that's her own fault, me personally. 
Um, but what that ends up doing sometimes is that creates a dynamic for their children, especially if it's a daughter, because the daughter sees that the mom is a victim. And I think that that's, that is something that is a, a problematic, that she feels that her mother was a, a victim. You know, newsflash, ladies that are listening, if your mother chose to stay in a situation because that was the best case situation for her, great. That shouldn't translate to you that you now have to live your life from a protected place in a way that is repelling building something that could potentially be great for you and then men that we're you're coming across the men that we're meeting you you know your experience is your experience our experience is our experience we're hoping to from an organic place grow with you share with you connect with you not on no oh i'm on you know protect and keep protect and keep all of my stuff in the, in, the, in the sense to where if this relationship doesn't work out, I can walk out unscathed. I can walk out still intact and move on to the next chapter of my life without, you know, suffering any type of, you know, backlash or repercussion or loss in the, in the, in the situation that was our relationship. I think that's nonsense. I think that if that's how women want to date, I think that there should be a conversation from a very honest place from both the male and the female. Like if a woman was to tell me, you know, okay, I plan on doing 65% of, bringing 65% of myself into the situation. And I expect you to bring 100% of yourself. I would tell her right there that there's no need for us to even further talk because see, if that's the case, fellas, then what we need to do is we need to go ahead and create the dynamic that is their nonsense of trying to protect themselves in that way. I give an example before I wrap this up. If that's the type of equation that she wants to bring because she feels she has to protect herself, well then there needs to be stipulations on how you show up in that relationship, whether that be financially, uh, whether that be attention wise. And that could be something along the lines of, okay, well, I don't feel the need for us to take certain like vacations on a plane out of state until you're my wife or I don't feel that gifts for you should exceed the value of $200 until you're with me three years or four years or five years or however long because see what it is you see they want to be able to experience the fullness of you without making a, a, a real deposit without having any what they call in the business world skin in the game and that's nonsense. That's not how we're going to rock. That's not how we're going to do things. You know, she's going to be in your life. She needs to treat you like the person that you are. She needs to treat you like the king that you are. And you need to demand that that's how you be treated. Don't settle for anything less. And don't be afraid, again, to tell her exactly just that. Like, okay, sweetie, we can make those type of, you know, um, we can create that kind of dynamic. We can have that kind of exchange. We can, we can run just like that. But... This is how this is going to look. See, like I've said before, life is about choices. Life is about transactions. It's about making the situation work to your benefit as well. And quite frankly, no one can tell you what kind of dynamics in your relationship work for your relationship. If they work for the parties involved in that relationship, fine. A perfect example of that is people who decide to participate in a lifestyle, like swingers and things like that. Those type of situations work for those people. Doesn't work for everybody, but it works for those people. And I feel that, fellas, that's what you need to do. You need to ask the right questions. You need to investigate what her intentions are. And if her intentions are to be in your life and experience 100% of you, and she bring 50% of herself, then you need to create a dynamic of what 50% from you looks like. That's all I got for you today. Uh, this is Daniel Rucker on True Table. Go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe. Thank you very much for all of those who hung out with me today. I gladly appreciate it. Um, I'm gonna continue to bring this content on a more you know, re re regular basis. Um, but please, you know, engage with me. Uh, find me on Instagram, uh, True Table, T-R-E-U underscore T-A-B-L-E. Uh, send me your questions, comments, concerns, or topics you want me to discuss. I'm here for you guys. You enjoy your day. I'm out.